it has been popular to record the final words of various dignitaries on their deathbeds. What pithy truth will they pass on? What visions have they glimpsed in these final moments? What bitter regret will they confess? Here are a few examples. Thomas Hobbes, the philosopher, said, I am about to take my last voyage, a great leap in the dark. Beethoven, friends applaud, the comedy is over. P.T. Barnum um, said, Nancy, referring to his wife, I want you to know that my last thoughts are of you. And Karl Marx, last words are for fools who haven't said enough. Or how about Groucho Marx, no relative I believe. Die my dear, why, that is the last thing I will do. This week we are considering the last words of Jesus Christ as he hung upon the cross. The Bible records seven specific sentences that he uttered over a period of several hours. And today we're going to look at Luke chapter 23, verse 46. It says, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. And I'll leave those words on the screen as we ponder this sentence. This week I've been reading a book by Richard Dawkins, who insists that death is the end of existence. There is no God, he says, no supernatural, no human spirit, no room for the miraculous, no life beyond death. According to atheists like Dawkins, man is reduced to little more than an energizer bunny that bangs his little drum for hours and hours until eventually the batteries run down. Even the love that I have for my wife and my children is reduced to a few biochemical impulses programmed to pass on my genetic code. Well, I believe that there is so much more to this universe than just what we can see and touch and analyze. And as Jesus hung upon the cross, his body in agony, his lungs aching for every breath, he knew that he was more than just flesh and bones. He knew that there was a God in heaven. He knew that part of him would live on beyond that moment when his physical body failed. With death only moments away, he expressed his confidence in this profound reality that his spirit would live on, that he would not cease to exist. I find it interesting how many people seem comfortable with the notion that when we die, our spirits go to a better place. We may imagine angels sitting on fluffy clouds and strumming along on harps. We might concede that a few particularly bad people should probably end up in the other place. This view of heaven certainly sounds attractive, with the departed perhaps keeping an eye on what's going on in the world of the living. And maybe once in a while you might qualify for a weekend pass. So you can pop back down and maybe terrify your mother-in-law. But is it accurate? I believe in God and his angels, but I'm not so sure about such pie in the sky when we die. The message at the heart of Easter is that Jesus died and then he rose back to life again. He didn't prowl the streets of Jerusalem as some translucent spectre. The Bible tells us his body was buried in a tomb. But on the third day, 
that same body was transformed into something different, into something substantially greater. Risen from the dead, Jesus was able to leave the tomb, even though the only exit was sealed. Hours later, he walked into a meeting room where the only door was locked. And he wasn't some ghost established by Mary when she held on to him for dear life by his sharing a meal with his friends and eating some broiled fish. And yet he was changed. Initially, Mary thought that he was a gardener. The disciples on the road to Emmaus didn't recognize him at first. He was changed. His was a resurrection body. Now Jesus received his body on the third day after his death. You and I, we may have to wait a bit longer. But one day, the Bible records, Jesus will return and we will all be clothed in resurrection life. And if we are alive then, our physical bodies will be instantaneously transformed. And if we have died, our spirits will be clothed afresh with new eternal bodies. That is the promise of Easter, that death is not the end. But just as God created each one of us as a blend of flesh and spirit, so shall we spend eternity. This saying of Jesus has found its echo on the lips of many a Christian when faced with the prospect of impending death. We trust in the example and in the faith of one who has gone before us. Jesus truly has conquered death. I want to finish by reading to you some words of a poem by John Donne. Death, be not proud, though some have called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those whom thou thinkst thou dost overthrow, die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill them. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death thou shalt die.